and he was worked on on the ground even before he got to the hospital. I was in a coma for five days. He had, a, he had a, an injury to his brain. Uh, he had a blood clot and a bruised brain to begin with and things weren't looking too bad. But what happened six hours later was his brain swelled and it swelled so quickly and so fast that all they could do, the only option they had left, was to put him into a deep coma like Brain did to rest his brain. And um, they told us that his brain could swell up again, but luckily it never. And we were living from hour to hour with him at one stage um, for about, I'd say, about 20 hours. And then it got to every eight, nine hours, and when it didn't swell again, then we knew that we were in, he was in with a fighting chance of surviving. Where's the accident? Just there. Well, I don't know. They stopped the traffic yeah, all over the Yeah, they stopped the traffic. Place. They might be letting us in there. Where the hell is it? It's where all those gaggle of police cars are, I think. OK, should we go on the road? Yeah, we can drop them, can't we, Alan? Yeah, we can Let drop the them. Let the OK. This job's out at Hanger Lane, which has to be one of the busiest intersections in the London area. It's my tail with the central reservation I'm worried about. OK. Where's your pain? All right, OK, what we're going to do, we'll cut this off, we'll give you a drip and I'll give you some morphine to take the pain away, all right? Mm. You know, just one minute he wasn't there, I, mean, I was just driving along, yeah. the next minute there he was. Right. Right. I slowed down and just... You know, I was slowing down at the time when he hit the side. Right, we'll take him. We'll take him to the plastic surgeon's uh, at the London, okay? Yep, fine. Do you think he's come from, he's come from your driver's side, he's walked between the two cars? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's about what happened, because, you know, because when, when he, he hit the cut of the van and he fell back. You OK, you've got quite a, a quite badly damaged left yeah, foot there, all right? It's broken completely. It, it is broken completely. Yeah. What I'd like to do is actually take you back in the air ambulance to um, the Royal London Hospital, OK? Well, yeah, where's that? It's in Whitechapel, but oh, they have the hell. Red base, medic one priority. Medic one, guys. Yeah, we're on scene with this gentleman uh, um, at Hangar Lane. He's been hit by a car and has a partially amputated left, uh, left foot. Um, what we intend to do is take him back to the London um, by air ambulance. OK, message copied. The road is actually now clear. The police have stopped the traffic. Yeah. How are you feeling, David? Still in a bit of pain? It's not too bad. Not too bad. All right, tell me if you want any more, all right? I've got lots on me. You got any earplugs? <coughs> One axis line in his left antecubital fossa through which he's had about 300 mils of crystalloid, 20 milligrams of morphine, and 12.5 of stematol. The foot distal to this fracture laceration, there was uh, no pulse on scene, but it looks to have pinged up a little bit now. Right, okay. Basically, he's, he's uh, got an open fracture of his ankle. His foot really looks like it was half hanging off, but it's, dis it's relocated well. The dislocation, pressure dislocation has gone back into place, and the circulation to the foot appears quite good. So though on the face of it, it looks a very nasty injury, it should respond quite well to, to standard orthopedic uh, fixation techniques. Initially, when I looked down and I saw my, my leg hanging to the left, it appeared that it was going to fall off, and I thought, my God, I think I'm going to lose it. That was my initial thoughts. But they were, uh, at the hospital, they must have been terrific, you know, with, the, with all the bits and pieces they put in. Uh, and I've got quite a bit of mobility now. I can't speak more highly of the helicopter rescue service. If it wasn't for that, I think I would have lost my foot. The team that they have at the hospital are absolutely amazing. Okay. 
Roger, we're still getting information that the armed assailant is um, on scene. Apparently this chap's been stabbed in the face. Um, that's all the information we have. Technically, from a medical perspective, no one is really in charge and you can arrive on scene and look very bolshy um, if you start dictating to all the emergency personnel who've probably been there two or three minutes before you telling them to do X, Y and Z. Um, it's, it's important to have good teamwork. Well, let's go down and see Yeah, I mean the police will um, I'll put you on the green you. because there's nowhere suitable around here. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, you've seen the site, site have you? Yeah. yeah, thanks. What's the name of the road, Ian? Minford. Minford Gardens. Yeah. Okay, there's road. a little kid running. Yeah. There's nothing out there. Are you right, your side? Yep, keep coming. The relationship between the team in the aircraft and the ground crews is on the whole very good. Sadly, now and again, we have individuals who take a dislike to us and give us comments like cowboys swanning out of the air, which is sad because we're all trying to work in the best interests of the patient. Hi, guys. Right. Cancelled you. Have you? Yeah. I haven't heard anything. Yeah. Right, what's the problem? Uh, all right, you're done. You're all right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. So? So there's only the one casualty, is yeah, there? Yeah, that's all. That's a typical uh, reaction there, wasn't it? <laughs> you actually cancelled us, did you? Yeah. Right, okay, what's your call sign? Oh, is he? Right. Okay. It pisses you off, really, isn't it? I mean, if we just got a, a bit more information from the call. Hey? Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, if we got a bit more information from the call, whoever put the call in, it's amazing. They're not always that keen to see you. You'd think it would be in the patient's interest. But, uh, sometimes they're just uh, not having any of it. Yeah. Just my luck, I'll get bloody run over now. We do have to go to suicides, people who've jumped off buildings, thrown themselves under, underneath trains. Um, and basically it seems like a bit of a paradox that we should be, A, trying to save life, um, but having to go to patients that actually want to die. Hello, Hemsops here, Medibac scrambling to square 330. What do we got? A fall, 40 foot, onto, we don't, don't know. know. Um, it's actually given here as a jump. Right, okay. But we don't know until we get there. True enough, true enough. Echo 210, know that we're coming. How many stories did you say? Five. Place works one. on your left. No, it's not. No, it is. Okay, got it. This is the Whittington, but road. There's no ambulance on scene, chaps, right. so we're actually we're looking for yeah, a group of people. We've I've, seen I've seen it, David. Yeah, is it? Yeah, I've seen it. See the block of black flats at nine o'clock, the yeah. short one, about five yeah. floors high. There's a load of people on the yeah, grass. That's what I saw. Yeah. See the church now on your nose. Yeah. If Just you go right to the church, there's a block of flats about oh, five yeah. stories. Gotcha. On the uh, grass, mate. Okay, I'm not going to have to kind of come down gently. Yeah. Keeping clear of the flats here. Yeah, you're well clear my side. That's it, you don't have to go any further forward. Okay. As no. you come down, you've got 20 feet to come down. Can I go right, uh, left at all, or is it, or are you happy there? It's just a touch, about two feet, that's fine, you're in now. Okay. <laughs> you got the suction? That's yep. it, that's great, mate. Right, get the suction out for me, how was it? 